Hey everyone, Micah here with Electrek, and today we're reviewing the Fukari Scorpio full suspension fat tire electric bike. Come along with us while we check it out. The Fukari Scorpio is another one of those e-bikes that is basically designed for both on and off-road riding, which you can already tell from the dual sport tires that have this blocky tread meant for more grip on the street while still getting pretty good purchase in the dirt. The bike is well specced for both too. On the electrical side, we've got a 750 watt rear motor that they claim puts out 1400 watts of peak power. It's tied into a 48 volt and 20 amp hour battery for 960 watt hours of capacity. The sky high range estimate is 30 to 60 miles, though like we all know by now, those manufacturers range claims are basically all on low power pedal assist, so expect less range than that if you're heavy on the throttle. But any which way you slice it, 960 watt hours is a lot of battery. And you'll want a lot of battery on these kinds of bikes, especially since they have a 28 mile per hour top speed, or technically even a couple miles an hour faster than that if you fully unlock them. And then of course you've got your full suspension design here, though that's where I start to have some real questions about this setup. So on the front we've got a typical suspension fork, that's all fine and good, but in the rear we have a much more rare dual shock design. This is normally seen on motorcycles and light mopeds, and is sort of a variation of that classic dual coilover setup. The issue is that while the front has good spring rate, the rear suspension doesn't seem to compress, like almost at all, or at least my 150 pounds can't get more than a slight movement out of it. I have a sneaky suspicion that when they doubled the number of shocks, they forgot to have the spring rate of the shocks which seems like kind of an elementary mistake. I mean, just look at those shocks. When I switch from road to turf, there's still almost no movement. It's not 100% rigid, but it's pretty darn close. That being said, the bike still works awesome off-road. And to be fair, I ride hardtail bikes off-road all the time. And this is a bit better than that. Though four inches of tire width under you does create some pseudo suspension anyway. So that's probably helping things here. As it stands, I still stand on the pedals sometimes to keep from getting taint punched by that saddle, but that's still pretty common when you're off-roading anyway. So suspension aside, the rest of the bike seems pretty decent. As usual, I'm not without complaints. The pedal assist lag is atrocious, sometimes a full two seconds before the motor kicks in if you're on pedal assist only. But of course I can just blip that throttle when I start up pedaling, and that gives me instantaneous power. Then there are the disc brakes. They are hydraulics, which is great, love to see it, but they just aren't as bitey as I would have hoped, probably due to some cheaper brake pad compound. That is something you could swap out if you were so inclined. And lastly, the turny derailleur here isn't exactly top or even mid-shelf. It's probably fine, this is not a high-end e-bike, but note that you may need to do some occasional tuning on your derailleur if you like to pedal and actually shift gears a lot. But for a $1,399 fat tire e-bike with full suspension, or at least one and a half suspension, it's a pretty good deal I'd say. The bike is fast and powerful, it comes with all the standard gear I want to see, like a rear rack, fenders, and LED lighting, even if I wish they could have put that tail light on the left side or even both sides, and the frame even looks pretty cool too. I'd complain harder about the few downsides if it cost more, but $1,399 feels reasonable for a fast and long range e-bike like this. In fact, I'd call it pretty darn fair. And if someone cares to swap out those shocks to something a bit softer, you'd probably wind up with a killer e-bike on your hands. So all told, I'm pretty happy here. It's not perfect, but no bike is, and the Fukari Scorpio does a pretty good job of sticking most of the landing I'd say. Thanks for watching everyone. We hope you enjoyed that review of the Fukari Scorpio. If you did, why don't you give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss any of our future electric vehicle videos. We'll see you here next time.